You have learned so much about the system of linear equations and the possible outcomes from the system of linear equations. Now is the time for you to know the applications of what you have learned so far. Let's imagine you have done an experiment and once you have obtained obtain a set of data from the experiment, the next step will be to find out the relation between the parameters where they want to investigate the influence between the correlation between the temperature and pressure on the properties of the water or anything as long as you want to find out the relationship between the both parameters to answer your experimental objective. Well, you will plot the data in Excel and then you add the trend line to get the equations to get the equations that can express the relation between the x and y your parameters and have you ever thought of how excel can give you the equation just based on your experimental data but it's actually back it's actually back to your linear algebra so the relation between the x and y in your excel graph it can be a linear it can be quadratic it can be cubic, it can be raised to the power of 4, 5, and so on. And we call these equations as the polynomial equations. And how do you know which one of these equations will give you an accurate equation? And equations that can pass through all the data points. Or you can use the equation to predict or to interpolate, to do interpolations on the data or on the experiments that you have never done before. Now let's imagine that you have obtained four data points from your experiments 1, 3, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 5, and 4, 0. And let's just plot on the graph. So this is the first point, second point, third, and the fourth data point. And let's use polynomial of degree 3 to find out the curve that, pause, that passes through all the points polynomial of degree 3 means that the power of the x will be raised to the power of 3. And why degree of 3? So try to link it to the number of unknowns and equations you have. So typical polynomial of degree 3, p is the polynomial equations which depends on the value of x. So I can write in this form, a0 is constant plus a1 is a constant multiplied with x plus a2 x squared plus a3 x cubed. So this is the polynomial equations for a degree of 3. The x power highest will be 3. Suppose that there is an x raised to the power of 0 beside the a0 here, but since it is equivalent to 1, and that's why we get rid, we get rid of it, we don't have to write it out here. So let's use the point here. So use the first point and we substitute into the polynomial equations here which will give you this equation. And you do the same for the second point, third and the fourth points. Eventually you'll end up with four different equations where the unknowns are A0, A1, A2 and A3. So basically you have four unknowns for the polynomial equations with degree of 3. Accordingly, we substituted the four data points into the proposed polynomial equations to obtain four equations. So these four equations will form a system of linear equations. And by inspection, the degree of freedom shows that the number of unknowns is four. The number of independent equations is four as well, so it's zero. Hence, we will have one solution for this system of linear equations. So now, if you base on the equations here, you can summarize it in the, this general form for the four linear equations. The first row will be corresponding to the known value, which is the x naught here. So it's one for all the four equations. The second column corresponding to the unknown of a1. So the known values will be the x value, right? So the x value will be x1, x2, x3, and x4 corresponding to the data point. And the third column will be referring to the third unknown, which is the a2 here. And the known values is x value as well. But in this case, the x value will be raised to the power of 2. So we have the x1, 2, until the x4, 2. 
and the last column, the fourth column corresponding to the fourth unknowns, which is the A3 here. And the X value, the unknown value, are raised to the power of 3, and that's why we have the X cube here. And for the augmented matrix form, the right hand side will be the constant, and, and in this case, the constant will be the Y value. So this is how you write the augmented matrix form for the system of linear equations for a polynomial approximation. Now you just need to substitute the value of x into the matrix and you do the row operations until you get the reduced row action form so that you can get the values for the a3, a2, a1 and a0 correspondingly from this reduced row action form. So the last step is you substitute the um, the values of the unknowns, the a1, a0 until a3 into the polynomial equations here, such that you have px equals to 4 plus 3x minus 5x squared plus x cubed. So this will be the polynomial equations that has been proposed, which can pass through all the points, all your as parameter data points. Now. You can apply this knowledge and skills to approximate complicated functions. Let's consider this case. You have been asked to find the integration from 0 to 1 for a function called sine pi x squared over 2. So the sine function's integration for the sine function which involves the x cube, x cube here, x squared here is tedious and almost impossible to integrate. And one way to do so is to approximate with a more handleable handleable polynomial equations. Let's say, if I want to express the functions of this in a simpler polynomial equations, let's say with a degree of 4. So, based on your experience, from based on the example that I, we have discussed and the past lessons that you have learned, how many data points should I need to use? And how many equations should I generate? based on the number of data points and how do I obtain the data point from these functions. So let's think about it and try to solve it. After you found the polynomial for the approximation, which means that you have found a polynomial equations which can represent these complicated functions, don't forget to substitute it back into the integration and solve the integration problem.